Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Jeffrey's Eagles going up against Marshall's Giants. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thanks. We are across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with the Philadelphia Eagles. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles' offense as they get ready to take over. They're led onto the field by the former third-round pick back in 2012, and that's the quarterback, Nick Foles. And when you meet him in person, the first thing you wonder, did he play basketball? And he did coming out of high school, was actually a recruited player for Division I, chose football, and had that monster year with the Philadelphia. Remember that one? 27 touchdown passes, two interceptions, and a Pro Bowl season. They'll always be measured against that year. Yeah, that was the 2013 season, and you're right, a heck of a campaign it was. Now a play fake here on first down. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Foles. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Trey Burton, the one he was looking for. And now it's second down. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now Foles, and he dumps it off to Blount. Able to corral him right at the midfield stripe following the busted contact. Four yards on the pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. They get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Incomplete. He had his hands on it, but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Donnie Jones set to punt it away now in his 14th year in the NFL. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. 
And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. Here's the Giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. And not great starting field position here for the offense. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Now a handoff here to his running back. Pushes him over. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Look, the first down marker is out there. But sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation. Which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big big pickup and guess what it's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down oh it's a nickel set here defensively on third and inches still want to be prepared for a pass they'll run it now out of the gun and he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed them for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Fielded just inside the 30. Nearly a huge return, as it is still a very good one. 24 yards, and the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. him over. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. But winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. There's Foles. That ball's caught. Aguilar, right side. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And he goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, 
can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. And he'll give it here to his running back. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And if you're the defense and those D tackles, you like that they're trying to run the football here against your 4-3, don't you? Yeah, because they tend to eat things up because they are so strong and physical, and especially when they play with leverage where they get lower than the offensive linemen and control them. And what I love about the good defensive tackles, they can play over the guards, they can slide and play over the center. Nobody in the offense likes that day when they have to deal with those guys. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They'll look to throw. The open man is Smith. And eventually taken down, but how about that athletic spin move we saw? Gives him the first down yardage. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, Tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball in their hands fast in this position and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. And here comes play number six on this drive. to throw here on second and ten. That is caught at the seven-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And the kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. So the drive takes them inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line.
the Giants offense now they get ready to head back on the field and the last drive their first drive three and out what changes here if anything I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball the biggest playmakers you have that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving so get it to the horses without a doubt they're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. This up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Throwing is Manning. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here... He's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Third down and three. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run! And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. First carry now for Paul Perkins. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 12 more yards there and another first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far working pretty well from them and here's the best part we always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on i think he likes natural light best now a play fake manning and he'll go out of bounds down inside the 15 yard line 18 yards the gain for number 18. lining up first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Paul Perkins taking it in from 14 yards out. And the Giants are going to take a first quarter lead. 
I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. So this drive spans seven plays. And finishing it off with a touchdown run, Paul Perkins. Rosas now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And to give this time to the tailback. And now running right through it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And that one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They go play action here on first down. His throw incomplete. Man, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. the 43 that time. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion and a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Eagles on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and seven. They're going to look to throw. Going to look deep for Jeffrey. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. Here's Donnie Jones now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. 
And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. Is that Woody he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> Now a handoff here to his running back. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Manning going to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's King. He's at the 30. The 20. 10. Touchdown, Giants. Tavares King, 94 yards. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. Well, they were back in the shadows of their own goal post, and that flipped quickly. So much for playing it safe. I mean, a conservative, easy call. Run the football, take care of it, create some space, pump the ball away, but no, let's throw it. And sometimes a defense's aggressiveness is used against them because when you've got people backed up, your natural inclination is to try and really force them back, and sometimes they get burned that way. And they got burned there. Rosas now to add the PAT. This one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Rosas now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. <laughs> On play action, they'll throw. Under a heavy and down he goes. Damon Harrison with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Out 
of the gun. They'll look to throw. He finds Aguilar over the middle. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've hit the end of quarter one. 14-3, that's our score. Back to MetLife Stadium in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Donnie Jones now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is taken at the 23. 51 yards on the punt there. And that will come the offense as they take over. discuss Eli Manning who of course didn't start last week a lot of news about that 210 consecutive starts and that streak now over amazing isn't it because his first start 2004 NFL season it was week 11 so it comes to an end almost to the week hmm. very close in time but that span of time how about the Cleveland Browns they've had 24 starting quarterbacks in that span of time yeah unbelievable you and i were looking that up before the game just shows you the importance of getting that franchise quarterback give him 12 yards on that one it earns him a fresh shot of downs every now and then when we see a really good run we really tend to focus on what other people did in order for that run to happen what the offensive line did what the receivers did to help sometimes the running back's pretty good too and on that play he picked up a lot of good yardage and made it happen with great effort. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. second down and he goes out of bounds it looks like right at the 50 six yards is the pickup and that'll lead to a third down I do have to admit I like it when it all comes together when the top part catching the football right whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it comes together with the legs in this case the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Single, single. 
from midfield. Here's Manning. And Ingram holds it in. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can't he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taken with the defensive given. one's going to go the wrong way losing yardage back at the 42 it's a loss of a yard there and now second down well, that play was doomed right from the start they just about ran into every defender on that one didn't he it felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle carry and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three on a second and long it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation I think that goes back to their practice and game planning they've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long distance situation they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much running room. Down to the 32. He needed three, he got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're gonna lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. When you put together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. Just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 12 yards there as they move the chains. It's really come into vogue to talk about the, the different gaps that the defense tries to attack in an offensive line. And most of the time, we're talking about blitzes. How many times have you heard double A-gap blitz? Well, where is the A-gap? It's the space between the center and the guards, either side. So when you're having a double A-gap blitz, that's two guys coming through that gap. In this situation, though, 
That A-gap wasn't open for the defense to exploit. The offensive line took care of it, protected it, and moved the defensive guys out of the way to allow for that nice run. Looking sideline incomplete. All right, Brandon, instead of breaking down, you know, that last play, I've got to ask, is that time of year because don't the fantasy football playoffs start? Aren't we ending the regular season? And if so, <laughs> how's your year going? I know, yeah. In the Godden Family Football League, it is starting next week. I'm on a six-game winning streak. I'm 9-4 and four going into the playoffs. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. Number, are you going to be the number one seed? I'm not. I'm one? the number three seed, but with my win streak and where I'm at, I'm kind of like Aaron Rodgers and the Packers last year, except he's better looking and more successful. So do you tell everybody to relax, <laughs> or do you just guarantee victory? Oh, I just guarantee. There you go. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still first down. First and 15 here behind the chains. Now they'll run on the draw. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Eagles on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and eight. Now flags come in here. Look like one of the Eagles might have moved. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The Eagles on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon. So apparently, neither guy is immune.
So they tried the 59-yarder and missed it, and now this offense starts just one yard shy of midfield. Play action, Manning. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Had two tight ends in the formation on that one. It looked to me like he had his pick of receivers downfield. I think he was just planning on going over the middle. That's what he did. Picked up first down, too. at the 36. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. I'm getting the sense that Fletcher Cox is making offensive linemen want to take the week off when they have to play against him. <laughs> it's a regular routine for him, isn't it? It really is. That play there, that's him all day long. Good luck trying to block him and keep him from disrupting your offense. running back and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven but you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation it seemed pretty dire but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run Manning on third down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oh boy, partner, did that just happen? I've got my hand over my eyes right now because like, like him, it's going to haunt my dreams too. He was wide open. How did he overthrow him there? Uh, defensively, just very lucky. You know that they got away with one there. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him. But this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now a handoff as they run left side. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Whether it's what we call an even front or an odd front, and an odd front's real easy to figure out. If that guy is lined up over the nose of the center, typically that's an odd front defense. Odd number of people, meaning 3-4 versus the 4-3, which is an even front. You've got to control those guys in the middle. Whether it's the nose or the two defensive tackles in a four-man front, if those guys can't get moved, you cannot run the ball in the middle of the field. And in that play, they were able to actually take care of business. Back 
to throw now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. Second and ten, going underneath to Blood. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage. And that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. here on first down. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Jason Pierre-Paul. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. The Eagles on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and 19. Now Foles to the right side, caught by Salah. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And this is no good. Close, but no cigar, just wide right. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's a second missed field goal here in this first half. He'll have to think about that going forward. Maybe time for a little soul searching as well. Yeah, the head coach might be looking towards the heavens because you wonder if this will affect the fourth down decision making going forward. 
If you get fourth and three, fourth and four, situations that used to be calls for the kicker might get a second thought. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Throwing on first down is Manning. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. A good pick up there, 22. Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So here we go, first and ten now. Shotgun now for Manning. And this is Shepard on the catch. A very solid gain of 27. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. and 10. Here's Manning. That is caught inside the five. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. To throw is Manning. And he will score. Touchdown, Giants. Eli Manning as the first half is winding down. And the Giants add on to their lead. Heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. 
He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Rosas to add the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it results in a four-yard touchdown run. Rosas now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end. He wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. If you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. They'll throw now on the final play. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front as we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks. And welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Giants are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Eagles won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's roll the highlights. Now first and 10, Perkins is gonna stay up the middle, and he caps off the seven play drive with a score. The lead grows to four. Third and seven, Kings by himself here. He gone as he sprints to the end zone. The lead now at 11. Eagles have it at the 27. Here it will get a sack by Pierre Paul. This goes for a loss of nine. We move late into the second. Manning's gonna take it off the right side, and he'll take this four yards for the score. That takes the lead up to 18. So that'll do it from our EA Sports Studios. Let's get back up to New Jersey as we rejoin Brandon and Charles.
So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now out come the Giants. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. And to give this time to the tailback. And a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Pretty move, couldn't create much space down just beyond the 35. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. up to about the 38-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. But well, now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long, and that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. The Giants on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and seven. To throw, it's Manning. He's going to air one out. And a shot taken on third down, unsuccessful. Fourth down now. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Brad Wing now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. Let's see if they can get the latter 50%. They run the counter now on first down. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. 
All right, it's football 101 to know that the quarterback controls just about everything on offense, but a lot of times what gets missed is that the center controls line play. He has to communicate to the guards and the tackles what type of front they're facing, how they're going to block it, and what adjustments need to be made sometimes on the fly as a defense will shift. Give the center a lot of credit because for the most part, he's got big defensive linemen over his face all game long that he's got to try and block and protect his quarterback and create space for his runner. In this case, he did a really nice job of communicating and executing. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And while there was no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Now a handoff looking right. There's a nice move. Eight yards on the ground there, and now they're looking at a third and two. Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. The Eagles on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This time they face a third and two. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to pick up the first across midfield to the 47. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out in a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because yeah. you got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. And got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Second year man, this is Jay and Jay. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Ajayi. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They'll set up to throw. And he is out of bounds, just a yard or two shy of the 30. They give him 12 yards and a first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. They go play action here on first down. He's going to wind up and air it out and nearly picked it off. He had a chance to come down with that in the end zone, but it'll wind up just being incomplete. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. 10 yards still left on second down. Tight, tight. Water, water, 
And again, this time to the tailback. And room there to work it inside the 25. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. The Eagles on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. Here it's third and two. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. So that one will be accepted. An eight play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. He'll look to throw. Aguilar has it. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. When the hitch route is run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he dumps it off to Blunt. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Back to throw here. This complete left side to Aguilar. And he's brought down. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. They'll go to Blunt, try and pound it in. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Let's just go ahead and go back through that play with his eyes because he's got to read his keys. Runner pass right off the top. You're probably going to read an offensive lineman to see if he sets up in pass protection, if he fires out for a running play. The next thing is you're going to check and see what the back's going to do, and if he ends up with the football, okay, now you got to check and see. Does an offensive lineman come downfield and try and block you? Are you going to try to elude him? Are you going to take him on and hold your spot? What are you going to do? In this case, didn't have to do any of that. Saw all of his keys, saw the play in front of him, and ran clean to the ball carrier and finished off the play. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Oh, you're going to have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one, but I don't think they're built like that. Third and goal now. Maybe the offensive coordinator thinking blitz here. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Losing four yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Another stop on third down, and this defense still hasn't allowed a touchdown to this point. Oh. 
Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Elliott puts this one through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off that lead. And now you put the pressure on your defense, who didn't particularly play all that well in the first half. But they're going to need to step it up here and make some plays if these guys are going to have any chance. To the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And New York set to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? On play action, now Manning. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. He'll take this up to about the 37. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. A handoff as they run the counter play. Getting this just shy of midfield. They'll spot it at the 49. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Another good run there. And now we're seeing an offense that's imposed its will on a defense. When we talk about that all the time, what does it really mean? It means that the guys on the offensive line, they feel like they can do whatever they want. They're not all saying, run it again. Give us another chance to smack someone and create some space. On the defensive side of the ball, not only have they imposed their will against you, you're almost powerless to figure out what you're doing there, but you got to keep your spirit up at the same time, and they're taking that too. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four. Four yards remaining now on second down. Down 
Perkins on the give from Manning. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Throwing is Manning. To Green at the flat. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Well, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it second and 12. I don't know about you, partner, but I'm rubbing my eyes after that play. Did we just see that runner not get yardage? A big-time play by the defense. It does happen occasionally, even against the best running backs who are having big days. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Now they'll run on the draw. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. The Giants on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. Working from the gun, Manning. He's got Lewis. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. I don't think this will even, nope, it doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. So now from a defensive perspective, they might still have a pulse. Yeah, that probably would have sealed their fate, but now they're still within two scores. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> <Toe bash. laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Super tough. <laughs> They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a reception made by Alshon Jeffrey. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. down he couldn't quite hold it got hit ball pops out incomplete 
That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Jeffrey with a catch left side. And he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. simple that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass and that one I think maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped surprising and was this game announced as a night game prior to and maybe his like rhythm is just off he's got know. thrown off he's got to wake up enjoy the sunshine and go play second down now after the incompletion Set up the screen to a J. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Now Barner. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Now Jake Elliott for the field goal try. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. has neither the distance nor the accuracy. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. So he's had some ups and downs so far. Two makes, but that's now three missed field goals. And as you well know, if you go two for five in baseball, you're a Hall of Famer. You go two for five kicking footballs, you'd be selling insurance real soon. Yeah, a little different story. Now New York set to take the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They'll run it now, out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Now Manning throwing on second down. Open man right side is Ingram. 
So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. That catch good for five. It's third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. The Giants on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and seven. From the gun, it's Manning. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Here's Brad Wing now as he's on to punt for New York. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. And tough starting field position here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be taken down shy of the five-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And give him a lot of credit there, but even more credit to the guys up front. In that situation, you know it's going to be a stacked defensive front. And to be able to gain that much yardage, that's a big win for the guys on offense. Yeah, they were just about standing on their own goal line, so to get a few yards there, a great start. Now we'll see what second down breaks. And a short gain here as he gets it up only to about the six. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Now Foles. And that is incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. So they're going to come to the line here, and it appears try to go for it on fourth. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it is incomplete. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And now, boy, the ball is going to go over on downs here inside the 10-yard line. But down two scores, I guess they felt like they needed to go for it. They must have thought they had a play to dial up that they could get it, and it didn't work out. Pat, they must have thought, as you pointed out, they had a play, and they were probably looking at the number of possessions that they thought were left in the game. And down two scores, they must have felt like they couldn't risk not taking a shot here and giving up that chance. And New York set to take the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And he'll give it here to his running back. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Double play, guys. Double play. Go set. Go set. Go 
And from the three now, it's second and goal. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelmed, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. The offense on third down, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third and goal. Shotgun now for Manning. This is caught, and he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Evan Ingram, a five-yard touchdown. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. They had the lead in the fourth, but still passing. Finding the big target for the touchdown. Now that lead grows even more. Everybody gets to join in the fun. You know, it doesn't have to just be the wide receivers catching touchdown passes. The tight end doesn't just have to do just the dirty work inside. He gets a chance to get into the end zone as well. Rose is now to add the PAT. He's got it, and the lead swells. It's 28 to 6. The drive there only spanning three plays, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. Rosas now to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. He'll come out throwing here on first down. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Here's Foles. Complete. Smith has it. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open, probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Mac Hollins, the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. Well, too much oomph. 
too much mustard there on that pass. They yeah, really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Second down following the incompletion. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. He'll drop to throw. And Jeffrey's got it. And he'll get this one down near the 20 yard line. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. They're going to look to throw. And Salik here, left side. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. He's gonna leave this for his running back, it's complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the nine. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. Back to throw again. And this is gonna be caught along the sideline, nicely done, but right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing on that one, it'll be second down. Love the effort, love the dramatics, getting the feet down. How about a little step shuffle along the sideline there, almost like a great ballet dancer or a tap dancer. All for no game, though? I was going to say, it's so pretty, <laughs> and it gets you nothing. <laughs> now flags come in here. Look like one of the Eagles might have moved. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They'll set up a throw. And it's caught at the seven-yard line. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you gotta, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he's going to get in for the score. And the lead now cut to 14. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. 
And this is going to be covered up by the Giants. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Well, New York set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. And to give this time to the tailback. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Giants on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Here's Vereen. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Brad Wing now. He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That will take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. And he clocks it with just over 30 seconds left. So 
So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. LeGarrette Blunt was the intended target. And it's third down. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. They'll look to throw here. He's going to let it fly. They've got his man complete. That's one they hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. Offense. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Looking to throw. And that one drops to the ground. Incomplete. Clock stops here just inside of 20 seconds. 19 left. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> they're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Manning will take a knee, and that should be the final act in this one. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Giants are winners as we say so long from MetLife Stadium.